everybody, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today's video, I really struggled with a concept. I didn't know what to draw. Um, I've had such a draining week as well. I mean, it's a good week, don't get me wrong. Like, good things happen, but you know, when, when you're just kind of stuck and I really didn't know what to draw. Um, but I looked at my DVD case and I saw my my good old Ghibli collection and I thought, you know what, I'm going to draw, draw Kiki. Kiki's Delivery Service is probably my favourite Ghibli film. Um, I've seen the majority of them um, and I love them all, you know, the ones I've seen. Um, but Kiki, I, it, it's so nice. <laughs> it's just such a nice film and what I love most about Studio Ghibli is that they take relatively adult themes or serious themes and they wrap them into this little animation so it's a little less difficult to watch if you know what I mean um, even with um, My Neighbor Totoro you know that film is about two children um, discovering this forest creature um, you know it's never really clear if he's actually real or if he's a figment of their imagination um, well I haven't seen it for a while I don't think it is anyway but um, you know how I see it and I don't know if it's the correct way of seeing it but how I perceive it is that they use Totoro as a way of coping with the fact that their mother's in hospital um, you know and there's similar themes going through all of the, the Ghibli films that they're going through the uh, protagonist is going through some sort of um, hardship or, or you know whatever you want to call it and you know that it's kind of just shown how they experience it and tackle it and whatever <laughs> um, but with Kiki's delivery service the, the theme that they seem to be going with is sort of coming of age, um, growing up, um, finding your place in the world, which you know I can relate to right now. Um, it's something that is exceedingly difficult to do. <laughs> and she leaves her her parents' house and she goes off completely on her own, apart from Gigi, who, side note, I absolutely adore. Gigi is without a doubt the best character, <laughs> and he is very similar, extremely similar to my parents' cat, Zulu, who if he had a voice, it would it would be Gigi. Um, you know, I think, mo I think most cats would have a Gigi kind of way of life, but <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Um, but if you haven't seen the film, you put it on your list. It is such a nice film, you know, it's definitely one to watch. <laughs> um, so I guess I'll talk about the drawing now, um, now that I haven't actually spoken anything about it. I really struggled with her face. Um, I'm not familiar with drawing in a anime kind of style, uh, and I just couldn't get her face right. Her features were just not, and they're still not right, if I'm honest. Her face is supposed to be a little bit wider, but every time I drew it wider, the features didn't fit, and every time I tried to fix the features, it just didn't. It just didn't look right. So I settled with how it is now, um, knowing that it's not completely correct but it looks you know like a face <laughs> and that is in proportion um but uh yeah i like to uh draw things quite smoothly um i don't really like harsh edges so i tend not to go with um heavy line work normally um but with this style it is quite heavily outlined so that's why i've, I've gone with it so up close it doesn't look the best, when it's in the video it's, it looks alright, <laughs> um, if you were to look at it in person it would be a bit jaggedy, uh, but uh, it's fine, it's something I've got to learn to do. As I look at other YouTube artists like Bailey Jane, her line work is on point and I'm sitting there going, oh, there's something I need to work on. Um, also something that I mm, can't really, well I can help but I can't at the same time is that I don't have a very large collection of markers, they are blooming expensive um, so I don't have a brown dark enough uh, to deal with shading um, and that was dark enough for her hair in general so what I did there um, is I covered it in various shades of warm grey and then I coloured it over with um, the darkest marker I have which is burgundy um, and then I went back over the very dark shaded points with the warm grey 5 um, that's the only way I can get it darker. I'm trying to build up my collection and I actually have a few naughty purchases coming my way soon. <laughs> but um, for the time being, you got to make do. Um, same with the dress. Uh, I don't have a blue that was dark enough. 
So I did the same thing with the, the warm greys, I did the sh uh, shading, um, sorry no, I went over with the blue, then I did the shading and then I did another layer of blue to blend the shading as well as make the overall dress darker. Um, I mean I could have probably just used the blue over and over on the points where it was the darkest, um, but I didn't want to put that much ink on the paper because again paper is quite expensive <laughs> as well so I didn't I don't have the best quality paper either um, so I didn't want to put too much ink in it because I have experienced in the past that it does bleed everywhere um, it's all right when you do a couple of layers two or three four maybe max but um, it's just definitely <laughs> uh, something I need to, to splurge out on um, but no, paper is expensive. Um, I didn't realise when I first started as, as an artist, um, I had no idea. I thought that, you know, you could just use any paper. I thought watercolour paper obviously is for watercolour. You know, everything else is for everything else. <laughs> um, uh, it took a lot of trial and error to kind of work out that was not the case. <laughs> um, but um, no, this the stuff that I'm using, you know, it's very cheap. I think I got a it off Amazon for like a fiver for 500 sheets and it's a very thick card, um, blending card, but um, it, you know, for for what it, I bought it for, I bought it to learn on, I didn't want to um, buy this expensive paper, same with markers, I bought quite a cheap set of markers to kind of learn with because I didn't want to waste my money on Copics if I A, didn't enjoy the medium and B, you know, just use them incorrectly and then you're wasting the ink and, I don't know. I mean, I have now established that I do in fact love working with markers. Um, so, I could go out and buy a more expensive card, but uh, it's a little difficult at the moment. Um, it's very expensive and it's definitely on my list, but there's other things that I kind of prioritise, which, uh, I don't know if that's a good thing. Um, but, uh, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> um, but um, that's pretty much it. Um, I did quite a basic background and you didn't see me, you don't see me doing this because um, I did it off camera because I didn't realise I wanted to do it until after I turned the camera off. But um, I put little uh, stars in a white gel pen in the background just to add something because it is quite bare. Um, but uh, here I'm highlighting everything because it looks so much better when it's highlighted. <laughs> um, and that, that's it. Um, so I hope you enjoyed, um, and I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye!